Um, I'm Xenia. Nice to meet you. Um, how many companies are here today? You're one. You, the three of you? Yeah. Cool. What's the name of your company? SPC Lab. SPC Lab Club. Cool. That's, that's why you're familiar. Uh, I was like, I know you guys. <laughs> cool. And you guys? Seen you guys too. No. Anyways, and yes. Okay, cool. So four, great. Uh, did you guys pitch before? You guys are not allowed to answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What was the setup of your pitch in Berlin? Uh, we, were, uh, uh, we were presenting an affair mm? um, at Bell IT program that was okay. really big and really professional. So mm? it was were you up on stage or were you like, standing by a booth? Um, yeah, Both. Yeah, it was, a, it was a very small stage and not far away from our booth. Okay. Cool. You guys? Yeah, we were. Uh, How did that go? Ooh, nice. And the audience was academia or? Oh, it's here. So the audience is academia? Or <laughs> it's a mix. Okay. Cool. And I'm sorry I'm not asking you guys because I already know. Um, right. Um, I assume that the reason they invited me is that I've been uh, doing this for a couple of years. And back in the days, I started doing it in a venture co context, uh, pitch training all of the finalists and making sure that you guys can shine up on stage. Um, then I did my own consultancy for a couple of years. Didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So, you know, <laughs> you go and work randomly. And uh, now I run something called Founders House, which is like a co-working space, but mainly for like software and tech startups and help them with their, among other things, investor pitches. And I'm thinking maybe we could start by um, doing all the things that we know we're not supposed to do. So I got your names at the start. So uh, if you could get you guys to stand up. You too. And um, maybe if you would do a really, really bad presentation of your company. And the thing is, you can only say your name, like your personal name, your company name, and then one sentence about what is it that you could do. But it has to be bad. It will <laughs> okay, please. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, we, my name is Jochen, we come from the PC Aqua, and we uh, use uh, electrochemical methods uh, to charge the PD to measure uh, the Exactly, exactly. I mean, personally, I thought that you started out really bad, so that was awesome. Thank you. Uh, this whole, uh, but what is them going to say? You know, like lack of preparation. So obviously, you need to prepare. That's super important. 
Um, can you do worse? <laughs> Nice. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, um, Christian's hand was like all the way down into his pockets, which is kind of the wrong signal you want to send to people. You're standing up on stage or just in front of them, and you're like, nah, not really too cool for school, you know, like, that's fine. I do my own company. I really like it. So there's an attitude, right? You do not want to create the connotations in your audience head that you're slacked about this. Yeah, bad like this. Uh, my name is Gus, and I represent the Tiki Agra, and uh, the chemical that we use for to be Thank you. I think I would like to um, emphasize two really bad things about this presentation. Uh, the obvious one. Closed body language, mm, we don't want to do that. But the other thing was this monotone, semi-staccato layer, like I couldn't remember the first part of your sentence because it was so boring to the very end of the sentence. So, of course, intonation. You need to use your voice in order to create awareness from your audience. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've all seen a teacher or a professor just going on in his or her own sense, in a very monotone way. We don't want that. We want people to remember you and your company. Isn't that lovely? Um, you know, sometimes you do stuff up on stage and you're not even aware of it. You have these small weird ticks I once uh, trained a guy, and he was standing up and was to do his presentation. And he, throughout the presentation, he was holding his arm like this. And he was not aware, I'm telling you. And it can be extreme, like this, while you do your presentations. Or it could just be the fact that you really want to emphasize what you're saying. And you're like, I'm going to use my hand, because then people can kind of see in my body language that I'm emphasizing what I'm saying. But if you keep using your hand, you're kind of emphasizing nothing. So sometimes it's a really good idea to just stand still. Next, please. I'm Jared and from Unity. We want to change the concept of NFT. Exactly, exactly. It's funny. You do, you're doing the guy thing. I'm not sure if you guys noticed the feet. Um, but, um, I mean, there's, there's no girls here. Um, so, so I can show you the guy thing. I'll show you the girls' things afterwards. Uh, just to make sure that, that none of the guys will do the girl thing. <laughs> um, so often, I don't know why, men standing up on stage and they do a little bit of like this with their feet. I don't know why, but it kind of makes me look at your feet rather than your face. You're probably not even aware of it. Thanks. Next. I asked you for a bad presentation. Could you do a really bad one, please? The idea was actually to talk to the audience that wasn't there. Ah. <laughs> fuck, fuck. <laughs> so do your presentation again, but even worse. Thank you. That was terrible. Um, so obviously, eye contact. And this is a little bit tricky, because you're standing up on stage, and you can't really have eye contact with every single one in the audience. But you can do the uh, rock star trick. You know, they're saying, and you guys, sing along. And then they go to the other end and say, you guys, sing along. And then they go for the middle, you guys, sing along. And uh, you, this is the principle, right? <laughs> so what you can do is that you make sure you look, because then you don't look like a rock star, even though you are. Um, you kind of look to one side, in the middle, and to the left, and then you kind of include people. 
You don't necessarily have to look them specifically in their eyes. Another thing is that you could also kind of take your body language, which is obviously open, not closed, and then your body language is open towards this side of the audience, even though you're talking and looking to this side. And then you're kind of inviting this part of the audience in on whatever you're saying. Exactly. Thank you. There is terrible content. You know, it's always important to know, obviously, wh one, what is it that you do, but even more importantly, what value does it create? The why. Excellent point. Please. Isn't that nice? Don't you guys over there feel very included? <laughs> um, uh, personally, though, maybe Gus too, the, the two of us feel very included because you did, you did the teacher's trick, right? You're, like, you're standing up on stage, full uh, auditorium, people are sleeping, they're on Facebook, you know, no con and then suddenly you're like, bam, eye contact. This guy and girl is actually listening. I caught them. And then you continue the remaining part of your pitch for those two people solely. That's why you need to look all over the place. Cool. I'm Matteo Karamanski. I'm a Stardust DTU. It's a non-profit organization that promotes entrepreneurship among the DTU students. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good one, because that's actually my main challenge. I like to move on stage, but if you move too much, obviously you distract people. So the trick that I've learned, because on the other hand, I can't just stand still like this. That seems awkward to me, at least. So I do move forth and back, but when I have an important point, I kind of position myself and I stand still on stage. That's my compromise. Yeah. So we're doing really bad presentations. So you just say out your name and one line about what you do, and then do it like terribly. My name is Jesper. I'm the leader of Stardust TTU. Can you all know me? Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Love the attitude, right? What? Huh? Yeah. Me? <laughs> and this is, of course, about your audience, right? You can't really assume that everyone knows you, your product, your idea, you as a person. You have to make sure that within the very first five sentences, everyone, no matter if they've never heard about you or your idea before, that they understand it. And then you can go into details and become technical. Thanks. Excellent point. Hi, guys. Adam, another one. <laughs> uh, we are developing uh, startups here, as you might already know. And I hope that you can go Thank you. That was like a true example of lack of enthusiasm, right? <laughs> hey guys. Uh, da, da, da. Um, so that's obviously super important. Energy, enthusiasm. Last but not least. So Georgia basically did everything wrong, right? He looked down, he, I think he, you had a little bit of fingers in, in your pocket, you kept over fumbling. Perfect, you took it all and put it into one. Cheers. Okay, so now we all know what not to do. So a little bit later, when we're gonna do the pitches, none of you are obviously gonna do these things. You may be seated. Um, Two minutes people have for their pitches? Yeah, two minutes. Okay, so of course preparation is uh, key. Uh, how many of you guys have a business plan or something similar-ish? 
Have you spent a lot of time thinking about how you want to develop this? Yes. Same thing, more or less. It's just not in writing. And the thing is, all those hours that you guys spend developing your respective businesses for an audience, the details, the features, all the many, many awesome arguments about your specific idea, they cannot comprehend. So you need to extract what are the key points about my idea. And in order to know which of the many key points about your idea, you need to know your audience. So the more you know about the person in front of you, add that be like a social setting, it's being up on stage, it's being who's on the panel and judging you, is it in front of the investor, the easier it is for you to know what is it that these people want to hear. Last but not least, what is the purpose? Is it a competition? Yes, you want to win. Um, but besides winning, is it uh, money you're looking for? Is it like a potential partner? Are you missing a co-founder? What is your goal with this specific pitch? Cool. This is the key to why people will remember your pitches and not the others. Because first, you tell them what you're going to tell them. Then you tell them, and then you tell them what you just told them, which is basically a principle of rapping. It's not because people don't want to remember you guys. There is just overload of information. And how many are in the program? Ish? Startups? How many startups? Seven. Seven. OK. So when we did the, um, the pitches at VentureCup, there would be between um, three and eight finalists. And after finalist number eight, or even just after finalist number three, the jury would still be sitting in the room and saying, what did those number one team guys do again? So it's super important that they, even they're going to hear seven other pitches, that yours will stand out. This is one of the tricks for doing so, helping them remember. Cool. The opening is key. Um, I think Matteo had a beautiful example of a dead boring opening. Hello, we started to teach you, we're a non-profit organization, you know, all the stuff that no one's really want to hear. And trust me, I've been there myself, so <laughs> you're totally excused. Um, how can you guys make a different opening about your company? Something that people will remember. I once saw a comedian who came on stage, he spent his eight minutes with, you know, jokes and whatever, and the entire time, he had this kitchen thing <laughs> in his hand. And I remember him to the day now, right? But it was like, it was so weird that he brought it on. He didn't use it for anything. It didn't do any context. I'm not saying that you're going to bring some weird thing up on stage. But <laughs> I'm trying to make a point about how can you make things differently. Um, Shape, at one point, another company came up on stage. And then their CEO, Christian, asked everyone to rise. And everyone was standing up. And then he said, empty your pockets. Everyone was emptying their pockets with all sorts of crap. And then he said, yes. And he, of course, him himself emptied his pockets. It was full of receipts. And he says, this is what we do. We have a product called Outlay. Take a scan of your receipt, and we'll make the whole process of reimbursement easy for you. And then he asked everyone to sit down. It was a simple thing, but people remember it still. Um, there were some girls who went for an academic competition in Brussels, I believe. I think it was in biotech. And so Julie was the one pitching. She um, took a deep breath, went up on stage, used the clicker, up came a huge photo of one of those old, like really old Nokia phones. She positioned herself, didn't say anything. Looked down at the jury panel and say, this is your competition. This is how old school and old fashioned it is. And they were like, oh, shock, what? Our competition, we are the honored jury, how dare you? 
Um, and then she clicked, and up came this new fancy phone, and they added a little bit of funny features, um, and say, this is what we're going to turn your competition into. And then she talked about her idea, about how she could change that. Um, so stuff like that is what we're going for when it comes to the introduction. You need to generate some sort of interest. Again, you need to make the listener understand. Otherwise, they'll just keep be distracted and thinking, but I didn't get what he's saying, so I'll keep thinking about that. And if I keep thinking about what is it that you guys do, I won't hear the other five sentences that you are saying now, which are really key values about your product. So from the beginning, people need to understand. And then we have this uh, <laughs> very theoretical, it's the C theory. So you need to smile. Smile is the shortest distance to another person for them to actually interact with you. And it's pretty easy up on stage because everyone kind of feels that you're smiling to them. Um, now that you can't have eye contact with them, but you have something similar. And then the enthusiasm. I'm pretty sure most of you have seen someone go up on stage and didn't really seem to believe in his or her idea. And it's kind of like, if you don't believe in your idea, why should I? So that is obviously key. And that's actually the basics. If you have smile, eye contact, enthusiasm, you're already here. And then we're going into the content. Cool. So what do you tell these people? Um, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, because you guys have some criteria and the criteria have been shared with you guys? Yep, cool. So you know what they're looking for. But since you guys only have two minutes, you can't fit in it all. Is there going to be a Q&A session? Yes, <laughs> cool, perfect, perfect. Because then in your two minute pitches, you can go for the basics. What is the pain? You know, what is the problem that we're solving? What is your solution to that problem? How are you going to make money? Don't forget that part. I don't know why, but a lot of people do. And this is all that they're waiting for. How are you going to make money on this? Who are you guys? Can you actually make it happen? Do you have some fantastic skills that you forgot to share? Um, because I need to, you guys need to be trustworthy, right? And you might be lacking something, and that's fine, because then you should just be prepared for that question when they do come and say, but you don't have a biz guy, or you don't have enough experience, or whatever. Then, of course, you're prepared for that question. You know that we have an awesome advisory board, or no, we are just currently looking for that exact profile. Um, so you kind of seem prepared and aware of it. It's kind of like an exam, right? You can set up the pitch the way you want it and then kind of hide a couple of questions that you're kind of waiting for them to, uh, to ask you guys, and then you have the answers ready. What are the resources needed? How are you actually going to make this happen? And uh, if it's investors, of course, how much money are you, first of all, looking for? Second of all, how are you going to spend them? And how much money will they get back? The exit. Um, and then there's always some skeptics, right? You've been out, you've been talking to people, and they're like, yeah, yeah, but have you thought about? And what about the legal situation? And how far are you in your uh, IP situation? And whatever. You probably know these skeptical questions much better because you heard them already. So of course, it's a matter of you guys to come up with answers for this. The how is in a pitching context, actually the most important one. I've seen people with fairly bad ideas get really far in, for example, competition setup because they wrap the entire thing really nicely, they prepare that pitch, they seem confident, making the audience feel confident in you. So do not underestimate the how do you tell them. And that's also what we're going to practice today. C-theory, 
be prepared. Talk slowly and clearly, making sure everyone can hear you, even the ones in the very back. Stand still. Maybe with a little bit of moderation to that. And then we're back to how do you make sure people remember you? You use a story. You have an awesome quote for someone who's actually going to buy it. Well, if you have a really nice quote, why not blow it up there in like a huge scale? Or do you have a number? We're going to save you 50% of whatever competing product you're going to use. If that's a really cool and very key, key value about your product, I wouldn't just put it in as another bullet in my slideshow. I would give it a slide in itself, making sure that the people remember that super important feature about your business. So, all in all, know your product, who's your audience, and what is it that you want to achieve. Make them, that is the audience, understand what's in it for them. And create some relations, because that's kind of the first step, depending on where you guys are. People want to help you. You just have to ask. Great. Thanks. Um, now it's your turn. Um, so I'm going to give you guys five minutes to prepare a two-minute pitch, and then we're just going to do turns, really. So you guys are going to turn around and pitch in front of you guys, and then vice versa. And you guys are going to pitch in front of each other. So five minutes starting now, preparing your two-minute pitch. Are there any questions? <laughs> I would recommend only one person, since you only have two minutes. I've seen, in general, I recommend only one pitcher on stage. In very, very rare circumstances, you can do two. And in one single occasion, I've seen three Italian guys make it happen and work. But elsewhere, go for one picture, because it just creates confusion. And especially since you only have two minutes. Any other questions? <laughs>